You're back with Bobby and JJ Radio. This show is all about information protection and operation security. And our first guests are David and Brian from David Schaefer Law Offices. Now, uh, David is originally from Montana. He came down here for law school at St. Mary's University. Been practicing law since 1996. He's married for 10 years with two boys. And Brian Trends is from San Antonio, graduated from UT Austin. He's married with one son, began practicing law in 2009, and has been with David Schaefer Law Firm since 2006. Welcome, guys. Hello. Thank you. I brushed up on all my law and order quotes to be able to play ball with you guys. I can handle the truth. And Bobby can handle the truth. So we're good to go. Hey, guys, tell us us about the law offices of David Schaefer. How long have you been in business? Tell me all about it. Well, I actually, I got married in 1997, so I, and I opened my law practice the same uh-huh. year. Oh, so they were yeah, they were linked somehow. Yeah, they were. Oh, okay. uh, so I've been practicing in that office for 18 years, and the last 10 of that, we have been focused on consumer protection. Okay. So if I get a speeding ticket, I ain't calling you. Yeah, that's not really our thing. All right. <laughs> so what, what is consum- uh, consumer litigation? Uh, De- definitively, it's any litigation that inv- involves a consumer transaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're involved in is primarily people that are sued over debt or harassed by debt collectors or are victims of identity theft. And I think that's why you got us on today. Yeah, well, that and your good looks. Um, so you. what is true identity theft? How do we clarify that? That's the theft of your personal information. It can be your social security number, your name. I think in the future, it's even going to be your likeness will be part of what identity theft is about, your biometric information. What does that mean? Uh, your, your, your face. Your face. Yeah. They uh, they actually now have camera, you know, pictures. They analyze your face, and it, it's it's a— So there's there's another me somewhere. Well. Maybe. They, I if hope they stole not. Your, oh, my if gosh. If they stole your likeness, yeah, yeah they could. And how, how, do you, how can you uh, protect yourself against that? Well, I don't think there's a lot you can do about that right now. There's That's a new area of law where they, they actually are telling companies that you can't store people's biometric information. So sleep good, kids, because yeah. there's no way to stop it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing that you can stop, though, is the theft of your personal information, or you can at least try to, and you have to monitor it. So I see that we need to clarify between, um, like, real, like, if your identity has actually been stolen, and if there's, sometimes you, you think it's been stolen and it hasn't. So what are some ways that people actually mistake identity theft? I think one of the things you're going to see, if it's if it's real identity theft, you're going to see something on a credit card statement or on your credit report, potentially. Uh, and sometimes it may it may be they just got your name wrong through skip tracing that that's how you're you're they're pursuing you. But most of the time, if it's on your credit card statement, you know you've you've been a victim. If it's on your thing. credit card, so statement, somebody okay. would contact you if, if they've had their identity uh, stolen. And what would you do for them? Well, <clears throat> what we do is uh, first we help them identify what's actually happened to them. So, for example, people get sued or um, they get someone calling them and say, "Hey, you owe us." $500 and you didn't pay it. And that person's like, well, I, I've never bought this or so mm-hmm. I never had a credit card. And so what we do is we kind of go through their credit reports. Uh, we go through their history. We uh, review kind of the documents they have. We can kind of tell them, you know, this is what happened to you. You know, y- your name is Jose Rodriguez. Uh, thousands of people are. And so someone just puts something on your credit report as an accident and we help them take care of that. But if they're if they're actually truly a victim of identity theft, it's 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 a it's a process. So you have to file with uh, the uh, the sheriff or whoever whatever city you're in. It depends, but usually the sheriff's office mm-hmm. something indicating um, you know this person is a victim of identity theft. And so then you usually have to fill out fraud reports with the creditors. And so you, you we'll send them a letter saying, listen, you know this isn't this person's debt, and they'll send a fraud packet. And then you fill out the fraud packet. They might ask you for 12 signatures and a copy of the police report. And then when you send it to them, they have an internal investigation unit. And if they decide, well, it is your debt, then, uh, you know, we usually have to litigate. And we have to file a lawsuit to get a court to determine that this person never signed that. And who are you filing the lawsuit against? Uh, usually the company, whoever says that, you know, you owe the debt. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, we go straight to the horse's mouth. It, it's a little more complicated if the debt's been sold to another company mm-hmm. because then, you know, we have to sue both the original creditor and this new company. Yes. And that's why it's so important to kind of stay on top of things and make sure you're, you're kind of advanced and, and you know what's going on in your, in your, in your financial life, essentially. And yeah. d- does it ever happen that somebody's claiming identity theft and they're just trying to get out of pain for something? Oh, all the time, yeah. Like, oh, my mom's not here. 
Oh, my mom died. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. Everyone uses that excuse, but... Bobby, you gotta stop using that yeah, excuse. Yeah, I'm gonna stop using and it. And you gotta stop using me, too, because that's just not... I'm not gonna do it anymore, bro. All right, guys, well, tell us, um, you know, what are some ways that you would recommend, just from your expertise, that, that people usually forget to protect our identities and our financial information? Well, so there are a lot of things. I mean, first, you should always check all of your bank accounts online. Um, a, lot of, a lot of places in San Antonio and all over the country... Um, People are putting these little scanner tags inside, you know, um, um, ATM machines, gas machines. And so once they get your credit card information and they can access your bank accounts, they can sometimes use that information to find out your personal information. So mm -hmm. you always want to make sure your financial accounts are protected and that you always check those accounts. Okay. Um, it's always good to always check your credit report once or twice. I, I think it's a good idea to do it, to do it once every two months. Really? Because, um, okay. The, I think the statistics are somewhere between 75 and 85% of Americans have something on their credit report right now that isn't accurate. Wow. Yeah, no, I know I know That's I have something on mine because every time I, you know, I'm financing home or something, there's always a, an address or two that I know I didn't live there, but it's for some reason it's How it's it follows me around like, no, I never lived there, but it's my credit report. Should yeah. I fight that or should I, it's not really hurting me. Do you just leave that alone? Well, no, it could because if you have someone who lives on the same street who has a similar name or if you know someone who maybe lived at that address, as soon as that address gets merged with your file, it's because they think that person might be you. And so all of a sudden that guy doesn't pay an electric bill and now it's on your credit report. Because even though we think of, you know, when you go and get a credit card, you have to give your social security number for electric bills, for hospital bills, you don't give them a social security number. You give them an address and a name and that's all they have to go on. And so oh, it can very yeah. easily end up your problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's huge because I, I never think to check my credit report unless I'm going to make a big purchase. So it's really interesting that you need to monitor it to make sure that your identity is protected. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with David and Brian. But um, before we do, guys, tell us how we can get in touch with your office if somebody needs help with identity theft. Um, well, you can call us at our phone number, which is 210-348-0500. Um, we also have a website. It's a www, which everyone has, dot helpingtexas.com. So it's Helping Texas, all spelled out and all spelled correctly. And we have a list of things that we do and contact information. Perfect. We'll be right back after Mortgage Matters with Trevor Morton.